Okay, you're, um, what, what you've been working on is a lot like what you've done in the past in algebra where you, you manipulate equations, uh, or you man manipulate expressions and by multiplying or dividing. And today, um, or this past few days, you've learned how to manipulate logarithms. And logarithms are just nothing more than exponents written in a different way. Um, and you learn how to manipulate them with the properties, the identities, and, and the laws. <clears throat> Today, we're actually going to apply all that stuff with an equation. You're going to have something on each side of the equal sign. You've got to learn what to use to manipulate and solve uh, for x. Okay? All right, so let's, uh, let's take a look at some basic stuff. We've got a lot of examples I'm going to give to you so that you have things that you can reference instead of just a, a couple things. So this is an exponential function. The, ex the exponential part is all by itself, 10 to the negative x. That's the exponential part of this, a base raised to an exponent. So if you have that all by itself, and that's rule number one, the exponential part has to be all alone, then what you can do, what you can do is you can take the logarithm of this. If I can take the log of 10 to the negative x, what would I get? What is the answer to that? Negative x. Negative x. The thing is, I just can't do that to the left side without doing it to the right side. So I'm going to take the log of 4 on the right. It keeps it all balanced. If you remember, you did this as one of your properties. Um, I said uh, base y. y raised to the log base y of x. What did you learn when those two were the same? It's equal to x. That is just that answer, right? Well, if I take this and raise it to that, the answer should be that. Well, that's what we got. So if I take the log of both sides, if I have the bases being the same, um, I can do that. But the problem is these aren't the same at that point. So I get negative x here. That's what you told me the answer was. But I don't know what the log of 4 is. But you have a handy dandy calculator you can use and tell me what it is. What's the log of 4, please? Okay, Daniel, what's the log of 4? Okay, now we have a negative 1 attached here. Let's multiply by negative 1 to change it to a positive, and that makes it negative 0.6021. Okay. All right, let's do another example. Example 6, we have e to the 3x equals 12. My question to you is, is the exponential part all by itself? Is there anything attached to it? No, e to the 3x is the, exp the exponential function part that is all by itself. There's nothing attached to it. It's not divided by anything. or not adding anything to it. So it is all by itself. That's the whole key. When that is the case, I can take the log of both sides. But in this case, instead of the log, I'm going to take the natural log because we have e. Natural log of e to the 3x equals the natural log of 12. What is that? 3x. 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 What is the natural log of 12 on your handy dandy calculator? So everybody needs to be doing it so that you know you're getting the exact same thing. I'm sorry. Divide by 3 to get rid of the 3. Did everybody get that? Well, this is the same thing as the log base e of e to the 3x. And if you have those being the same, the answer is just 3x. And that's the whole point. If you can take the logarithm of both sides to change the way your exponents look, then that's what we want to do. 
So you're learning a new tool how to change the way things look. And you're going to get more things, so you got to kind of pay attention to the way the problem starts out so you can recognize what to use. So we've already explained why that's 3x. Example 8. 3 to the 2x minus 1 equals 5. Now, you all show me that you can do this right. You guys be quiet. It's be hard to learn this out in the hallway. And you probably come into a problem. What should we do to both sides? Yeah. What did we do? If you get a, an exponent part all by itself, we can take the log of both sides. Except this doesn't really help me here, right? I don't know what the log of 3 to the 2x minus 1. But I learned yesterday that I could put this out in front times the log of 3. Oops. Everybody agree so far? I haven't done anything you haven't been taught. Alright, exponents go out in front. That's what you learned one of the laws yesterday. Now how do I get rid of the log of 3? And I divide it off. It's just algebra at this point, that's all we're doing. Manipulating what it looks like. So I have 2x minus 3, minus 1, sorry, equal to the log of 5 over the log of 3. So you're going to take your calculators and you're going to figure out what this is and then solve the algebra part of this. So if I do that right now. by the log of 3, and then solve the algebra problem. Equals 17. What's wrong with it to start? 2e. You got 2 attached to it. The exponential part of it is not by itself. It's 2 times e to the 12x. So what do we need to do to get rid of 2? Divide by 2. So you get 17 divided by 2, which is 8.5. One of the few times I allow you to use decimals. So in the next few chapters, we'll be using decimals a lot. And solve it from there, please. What do I do? Natural log of both sides. Step one, get the exponential function by itself. Step two, take the log of both sides, in this case, the natural log. Solve it, please.
to the mass log of 8.5? Divide by 12, what do you get? 4. Let's take it out four decimal places. We got that right. Awesome. Excellent. All right, let's, uh, let's make it really interesting. There you go. Number 12, there's 50 problems. You want me to make it bad? Yeah, I mean, they'll get a little more complicated. All right, Vito, tell me what to do. In my calculator. Nine fourths minus four fourths. That's negative one, isn't it? Five fourths. Five fourths, which is one point two five. One and one fourth, or one point two five. So now what do we do? Take the log of both sides. What do you get on the left? equals 3 
or e to the x equals negative 2. Everybody put in their graphing calculator, y equals e to the x, graph it. And do you have the uh, yeah. have it on your screen? Can x be negative 2? Somebody have a graph at negative two when x is negative two? Is there a y value? I, I'm asking yes or no. There's a y. Let me look at your graph. Yeah, no, there's not. E to the x. E to the x. Negative two. Right. Just saying. Okay. If this is negative two. That's four plus two, six, six minus six is zero, correct? Okay. Check three. Give me a non-real answer. Wait, it's imaginary. Oh, so e to the x can't be negative two. E to the x has to be greater than zero. Keep that in mind. I didn't say x had to be greater than zero. I said e to the x has to be greater than zero. Okay, keep that in the back of your mind. Let's do. Go back to doing something easier. Yeah. I will. All right. So now I actually have a log. So I'm not gonna. I'm not trying to get the exponential by itself. I don't have an exponential. I want to make this into an exponential. This is what you did last week. Change the. Um, the equation into an exponential. So how do I do that? What's the base? 10. So don't I take 10 to the third? That's right. Yeah, 10 to the third equal to x minus 4. What's 10 to the third? 10,000. 10,000. What's x? But if there's a log in the problem, you need to manipulate it back into an exponential. If we have an exponential, you need to get the exponential by itself and take the log both sides. Alright? Let's do another one of these. Uh, Alright, Vito.
this and they're the same, it's just whatever these uh, answers are, okay? Everybody solve that from there, please. It's a trinomial, factor it, tell me what your answers are. And then I want you to think about your answers and tell me if it's possible. Because not only do you have to be able to solve the logarithm, you have to be able to tell me if the answer is possible. Plus five x minus four. Yeah. X plus five, x minus four. So x is either negative five or x is four. Can I take the log of a negative? Uh, 338, 3 to 49 odds. Okay. 